we are here fighting with the taxi drivers because nobody wants to take us to our hotel. And my driver has decided to drop me off because he didn't want to go through this road. The Cathedral of Manila was destroyed several times. We are in our flight to Cebu and the plane just smells so bad, like very, very bad. I don't know what it is, but it just smells so bad. We made it to the Philippines, country number 43. Let's go. We made it to the city center of Cebu. I wasn't expecting this sun, this intense heat. It was meant to be raining, but at least we have good weather, perhaps too warm. But well, we, we've come here to, the, to one of the oldest Spanish forts. I will tell you more about the history of the city in a few minutes. The man you just saw is Legazpi. Legazpi was one of the main Spanish conquerors that came to the Philippines and started the colonization of this country. Plaza Independencia, which means Independence Square in Spanish, and I guess in Cebuan or Tagalog too, I don't know. Cebu is located in the center of the Philippines. It is the third largest city nowadays, but it has a very, very rich history. That's why we've come here. Cebu has always been a thriving port. In fact, it was already an important port in the region before the arrival of the Spanish. In 1521, the Portuguese explorer Fernão de Magalhães, working for the Spanish Empire, arrived in Cebu, kickstarting the Spanish colonization of the Philippines. Later that year, Magallanes would die in the island of Mactan. Mactan is an island which is just in front of Cebu. It is where the airport is located. He died there because of a poisoned arrow in a fight against the locals here. The expedition of Magallanes, however, would continue after his death. Elcano would take the lead of the expedition and they would reach Spain again and they would be the first expedition to circumnavigate the world. The structure you see behind me hosts the first cross ever brought into the Philippines. It was brought by the expedition of Fernando de Magallanes and it remains here ever since. He put it here marking the wish of Spain to Christianize Asia and especially the Philippines. The church you see behind me was constructed in 1565. It was one of the first churches built by the Spanish in the Philippines. However, it was burned one year after and then it was reconstructed and this is how it is today. Check it out.
Cebu would become the capital of the Philippines for six years until it was moved to Manila. So here's the situation. We just booked uh, an appointment for the barber. We want to uh, shave our beards. We want to get our, our hair cut. The thing is, I just made a poll on, on my close friends on Instagram. So I am waiting the results. Uh, I will probably get a normal haircut. And uh, after that, I will see the results. If the results are shave your head, then I will shave it. But yeah, let's see what my friends vote. This is a representation of an old colonial house here in the center of Cebu. Hello from Cebu International Airport. In the end, I decided not to cut my hair that much. <laughs> I was so afraid, honestly. But anyway, now you're heading to one of the biggest cities in the world, and it is here in the Philippines. Let's go. Welcome to Manila. We are here fighting with the taxi drivers because nobody wants to take us to our hotel for some reason. So we are just waiting here in the road, waiting for a taxi that wants to take us home. This is our hotel in Manila. It is also a quarantine hotel, so uh, people that come here that have to quarantine or whatever, they can also use this hotel. So there's like two elevators, one for people doing the quarantine and others for, for people like us that are not doing it. We are in the middle of Manila here because uh, because we had to do our laundry. We have done it and now we are ordering our food. Matias is taking McDonald's, I'm taking a pizza here and yeah, it was very cheap. Let's see if it's really tasty or not. from Manila my driver has decided to drop me off 200 meters away from my destination because he didn't want to go through these roads apparently so yeah I will just have to walk in and collect the laundry hello yes that's me Before the arrival of the Spanish, Manila used to be a Muslim settlement, which lift off the trade with China and other countries in the region. In 
fact, Manila has always had a very large population of Chinese people, Chinese traders, that have contributed the most to the development of the city. In 1571, the Spanish arrived to Manila, led by the commander Legazpi. They destroyed the Muslim settlement and they founded the inner part of Manila, Intramuros, the walled city. From that moment on, the Spanish would boost the growth of the city and it would become one of the main capitals of Southeast Asia in terms of trade and colonial imposition. We are now heading to the Cathedral of Manila. It is very important to mention that the Spanish, one of the main things that drove the Spanish to come to colonize most of the parts of the world was not only trade and the wealth they could extract from those places, but also to convert the natives into Catholicism. The Cathedral of Manila was destroyed several times throughout history, up to seven times due to typhoons, earthquakes, even it was bombed in the Second World War. And now here we have the final product. As I mentioned earlier, the Chinese played a key role in the development of the city. In fact, it was the Chinese who were the fixers in the trade between the Spanish, mainland China and the rest of the region. They made up a very large part of the population of the city. And in fact, in the 17th century, they featured a revolt against the Spanish, which uh, resulted in many casualties and in a very sad episode in the history of Manila. We are now in the oldest part of Manila. Intramuros, which is the part inside the walls. Right there, we can find Fort Santiago, which was the main construction, the main fort against foreign invasions. It was the Chinese, the English, the Dutch, who tried to take over Manila. But it was only until 1898 that the Americans could finally defeat the Spanish and conquer the Philippines. It was in that year, 1898, where Spain and the United States fought the Spanish-American War, which ended with most of the colonies of Spain outside Europe and Africa, and set the Spanish state into an everlasting crisis. The man you see here is Jose Rizal. Jose Rizal was one of the main heroes of the independence of the Philippines. He was hanged by the Spanish, accused of rebellion and inciting revolution against the Spanish, but it would later become a national hero. However, after the Americans conquered the Philippines, the Philippines did not attain their independence. They fought a long war against the, the Americans, and it was only after World War II that the Philippines would gain its independence from the US.
We are saying goodbye to Manila in this beautiful garden. It has been, hello. It has been great. Uh, it has been a very great visit. Manila was way better than I expected. It is a very interesting city and I think staying only 24 hours here, it's a mistake. So don't repeat the same mistake as we did. I am definitely coming back to see all the places I haven't checked. So yeah, thanks for staying until the end. Big, big things coming in the Philippines in the future. So stay tuned and see you soon. Bye.